This question deals with the combination of two normally distributed random variables. The example we're looking at is that we are producing syringes, so we need the cylinders and the plungers. Both of them are produced with some variation that follows a normal distribution. To understand the problem, let's just illustrate. So here we have the syringe, the tube or the cylinder, and what we need in there is some sort of uh, plunger that uh, then sort of pushes into that cylinder to to push out the uh, whatever is in the uh, in the syringe. So what we are interested in is the diameter of the cylinder, we call that x1, and the diameter of the plunger, we call that x2. Both of these are produced with some random variation and the issue is that as long as the cylinder is larger then the plunger it's okay, um, certain limits of course, but if the cylinder is narrower than the plunger then of course we have a problem. So if x1 is smaller than x2 the syringe just isn't gonna work. So with that set up we can now look at the question uh, 4.1. Here we assume that we pick cylinder and plungers so from two boxes and they're picked in a sort of independent manner. And what we are asking is what proportion of uh, plungers will not fit. So we're asking for the probability that x2 is larger than x1. Let's form a new random variable. Let's call that y and we define that as x2 minus x1. And what we are then really looking for is the, the probability that y is larger than 0 and that's equivalent to the probability that x2 is larger than x1. And whenever y is larger than 0, the syringe isn't going to work. Now, as both x1 and x2 are normally distributed, and we're having a linear combination of two normally distributed random variables, we know that y is normally distributed as well. And how do we, and that normal distribution is going to be defined by an expected value for y and a variance. So how do we calculate that expected value for y? And that's just the linear combination of the expected values of the two variables. And we get 0.5, actually negative 0.5, I'll add that in a minute. The variance for y is going to be 1 squared times the variance of x2 plus negative 1 squared times the variance of x1. And now of course there's going to be a, a covariance part, but since x1 and x2 are independent, well, that covariance part is just going to be zero at the end. It's two times the two weights times the covariance and that's zero. So now we just need to plug in our values for the variance of x2 and x1 and what we get if you do the calculations is 0 0.0625. So now with that we can now proceed to calculate the probability that y is larger than zero. Now y is a normal distribution which is non-standard, that means we need to standardize it, and that's our formula, naught because that's the probability one, minus the mean of z, minus, divided by the standard deviation, I forgot the minus, so I need to add the minus up here. So we'll have the probability of z larger than zero minus minus 0 0.5, which is the expected value of y, divided by the standard deviation which is just the square root of the variance and the variance is 0 0.0625 so this is our standardized value for which we need the probability so that's equal to the probability of z is being larger than 2 and that's the same as 1 minus the probability of z being smaller than 2 and sm smaller than 2 because we know these type of probabilities we can read off from a uh, standard normal distribution table Okay, and I assume you know how to do that. That probability is 0 0.9772, and therefore the probability we are interested in is 0 0.0228. So that means there's about a 2.3% probability that a particular syringe that's collected in the way described is unusable because the plunger is larger than the cylinder. So what about the second question here? we're being told that the, the combination of the components is such that actually there's some 
positive covariance, covariance of 0.02. How does that change our analysis? Now, we'll keep the same setup of our random variable y, and the expected value of that is still going to be negative 0.5 and is unchanged. The variance of y, however, is now going to change because that covariance term isn't going to disappear. This is the calculation we used earlier. Now, for, for the first part of the question, what's going to change is this zero back here. That's going to disappear, and therefore the result is going to disappear. So the covariance in our question now, we're being, we're being told that covariance is 0 0.02. So let's use exactly the same formula, just with that new covariance plugged in, 0 0.02. And we get a new result for the variance of y, and that is 0 0.0225. So let's recalculate the probability that y is larger than 0. That was the, uh, the case of an unusable syringe. We again perform our standardization. It's the same. It's just that the variance we're going to use is changing. It's smaller, actually, the variance due to the positive covariance. So we are looking for the probability that z is larger than 3.33 or 1 minus the probability that z is smaller than 3.33. If you go to the normal table, you, you may not find that value because it's so far in the tail that basically the probability is 1 and therefore the probability that y is larger than 0 is approximately 0 and therefore we are almost certain that all syringes are usable.